Mrs. Rainbow, no more a bird watcher than I am. So what you been using those binoculars for? And that son of hers, this personalised Porsche, where did you get the money to pay for that? Dr. Lesseter tells me he spent Wednesday afternoon watching the test match. There was no test match. Rain stopped play. And his wife's just as bad. She was shopping in Corston all day on Wednesday. It's early closing. Catherine Lacey tells us she never left the house on Wednesday afternoon, except that she was seen. So suddenly it's another story. She went to post a letter. Then there's the question of Bella Trace and the shooting accident. You don't think it was an accident? Henry Trace's story, what he told us. There's something wrong. Something doesn't add up. You think he was lying? I don't know. Maybe he was. Maybe he was simply mistaken in his account, but he wasn't telling us the truth. Michael Lacey. Why did he run all that way back to Thai House to call the ambulance when the accident happened on the other side of the village? Why didn't he call the ambulance from there? And why, that day of all days, did Phyllis Cadell decide to shoot? Which one of them, Troy? Which one? It seems they're all bloody liars. One of them is something more. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Amen. Still haven't caught him. Oh, it's early days yet, Miss Belden. <laughs> Not for poor Emily. Oh, come and Sherry, Chief Inspector. I feel the need of a drink. I'm afraid funerals do that for me. Yes, of course I remember the day Bella died. It was terrible. No, thank you. Henry Trace was already in a wheelchair. Yes, polio. Bella never coped with it very well. You know, when she died, I always thought he'd marry Phyllis. Oh, the sister-in-law. Mm. She adored him. Still does, for all I know. What can you tell me about Catherine Lacey? Well, she's Henry's ward. She and Michael, her brother, and when their parents died in, in a car crash, Henry sort of adopted them and set them up in a gamekeeper's cottage on the estate. Holly Cottage. Yes. Well, they were very young then, barely into their teens. Oh, and there was a nanny. Mary Sharp, that was her name, Nanny Sharp. Well, she was meant to look after them, but she had a terrible time. In what way? Well, I understand the children were always fighting, endless rows. In the end, Mary upped and left, and now she's retired down on the coast. Emily could have told you more. She knew Mary quite well. More sherry? Uh, no, I'm fine, thank you very much. If you ask me, Catherine's the one to look out for. Meaning? Well, that girl is far too beautiful for other people's good, and if she was found bonking in the wood, she has the most to lose. She's got a point. You did say Catherine was seen in the village? Yes, she was seen walking a dog. Oh, well, there was no dog here that night. Wellington goes crazy if a dog comes anywhere near. She could have tied it up somewhere and come here alone. <laughs> Not that dog. She sometimes ties it up outside the post office. It barks its head off. You'd have heard it a mile away. Oh, damn. Do you know, for a minute, I thought I had the whole thing solved. <laughs>